because I've planned for you a quick abs workout. We're going for low intensity fitness training. It's going to be aimed at those of you who may be starting a fitness program, maybe those of you who've been away from a fitness program and are trying to get back into it, or those of you who want a quick reminder about all your technique to make sure you're doing everything in a correct and safe way. Now, this quick abs workout is a set of eight different exercises. For each one, I'll give you level one, which is your basic, level two, which is moderate, and level three, which is hard. Now to start with, pick the level that's right for you. In time, you can either take the level of repetitions up to increase your strength, or you can take the level of intensity up to give you more of a workout. Choose what's right for you. Don't aim too high to start with, pick a safe level, and then gradually, as I say, over time, take it up. The thing to remember is technique, which is far more important than any amount of reps or levels of fitness. Technique first of all, and then gradually build on that over time. Hope you enjoy it. We're going to be starting off with crunches. So I'm going to get down on the mat and show you some nice basic crunches to get you going. So I'm looking for bent knees, feet flat on the ground to give you stability. Your core, I'd like pulled down and through the ground. As you're doing these crunches, don't let your tummy bulge with the effort of the exercise. Pull it nice and flat so you're strengthening it in that good flat position. I'd like a nice gap under your chin. No tension in the neck, no crunching. Nice gap under here, so you can fit a tennis ball under there. That sort of gap we're looking for. Different levels with the arms. Most basic level, arms across chest. Next level up, hands by ears. Third level, hands there, above your head, to add more leverage, make it harder. We're gonna do the basic one now to start off with, but you pitch it as where you're at. Okay, so 10 sit-ups, nice and steady and controlled. One. And two, so pulling that core flat and down to strengthen it in that flat position. Nice gap under your chin. Try and release the tension in your neck, make your abs do the work. Steady and controlled. We've got eight, nine, last one. 10. Good stuff. Okay, the next exercise, we're going on to side bends, so standing up for the next one. So, we're looking for even hips, nice soft knees, don't lock them out. Nice soft knees, everything parallel, so hips, knees and feet all facing the front to give you a good base. Different levels, we can go for hands on hips for an easier level. Next level up, we're gonna go for hands by ears. If you want to make it harder still, hands up in the air. Again, longer leverage, so it's gonna be harder. For the demonstration, I'm gonna go for hands by ears. We're gonna do 10 sets of side bends. So the whole way through, keeping here down, nice and still, no movement at all. All the work is gonna come from your core. So, leaning sideways, make sure you're going directly sideways. Don't lean forwards and definitely don't lean back, or you're gonna put extra strain on that lower back. Pull in your abs, off we go. I'm going to go one and two. So again, nice steady pace. Three, getting as much movement as you can. Four, five. Obviously, the further over you go, the more you're going to be working your core. That's six, seven. Remember, hips down nice and still. It should all be coming from your waist. Eight, nine, and last one, 10. So you should really feel this working, mainly in your sides, but it should be working in lots of areas of your core, but mainly in the sides. If you don't feel it there, move over further. Take your body further sideways. But again, remembering, hips down, no movement at all. It should all be coming from here. The plank is a full body workout. It, it mainly concentrates on your abdominals and your core, but it does work the entire body, which is why it's one of my favorite ones. So the easy version, we're gonna be on elbows to do this one. The easier version, you have your knees on the ground to take some of the pressure off your core. The more confident and the stronger you get, we're going to gradually increase that distance between
between your knees and your arms and gradually start to lengthen you out. And the hardest version is where you're on your feet and your hands. Let me show you three different options now and you pick the one depending on your fitness level. So, elbows in front of you, hands nice and flat. This is the most basic version. As I was saying, the further you lean forwards and the more distance you get between your elbows and your knees and your feet, the more you lengthen yourself out, the harder it's going to be. So, level one here, level two. Increase that distance and your core, you'll, you'll start to feel it working harder. Level three, the hardest, up onto your feet. Now, in this plank position, we need a nice still position. We don't want any moving, no jigging around. We want to really work your core hard. So, nice and still, no bottoms up in the air, nice and level, nice deep breaths. Squeeze your backside if you can to again get more of a workout from it. And we're gonna hold this position for 10. So 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now, as I explained, we don't want bottoms up in the air too much. Nice and still, nice and flat. That's the ideal we're aiming for. As you get stronger, you can increase that distance and make it gradually harder. Planks can be done in a variety of ways, but this is the most basic level for you to start off with. So the next exercise is a Russian twist. Again, I'm gonna give you different levels, so pitch it as to where your fitness levels are at. So, for this one, I ideally need a water bottle or just something light you can hold in your hands to give you a focus. So I'll show you from front on to start with, then we'll do the exercise side on just so you can have a better look at the technique. So, most basic level, everything nice and parallel. Hips, knees and feet all aligned, feet nice and flat for grounding. Holding your water bottle or any other light item is fine in front of you. We're gonna be twisting from side to side. Now the whole time we're doing this, we're pulling in our core again, so we're strengthening it in that lovely flat position rather than letting your abs bulge out. We don't want to strengthen them in a bulge position, we want to strengthen them, strengthen them nice and flat. So this is the basic level, twisting from side to side. This way. The next level is to add an incline. So again, pulling up nice and tall and pulling your abs in, making them work. So we're leaning back, that's your next level. Then, if you want to add another dimension to make it even harder, legs off the ground. So twisting from side to side in a balanced position. I'm gonna show you the medium level to start with. I'll do it side on again so you can have a better look at the technique. So, legs nice and parallel, feet grounded, and making your core work, pulling it in nice and flat. Shoulders relaxed and down with any item. If you don't have an item to hand, you can use your hands, just hold them together but I find this helps. So, I'm gonna add a slight incline for mine, and we're gonna do 10 sets of twists, okay? Again, keep your neck nice and relaxed, that gap under your chin, no crunching in or tension here, the tension should all be in your core. So 10 sets, so we're gonna go side to side, nice steady pace. And two. Nice and even, no jerky movements. And three. Make sure as you carry on, you think, keep thinking about your posture. Don't let this happen. Shoulders down, core held in. And five. And six. Try and relax your shoulders and your neck. Don't hold the tension there. Seven. And eight. Still nice and steady, slow and controlled. Two more, keeping the upper body relaxed. Nine. Last one, pulling that core nice and flat. And 10. There we are, that's your set of Russian twists. Now on to the next exercise. The next exercise we're going to do is a mountain climber. So again, we're gonna have three different levels, your level one, two, and three. Again, make sure you pitch it where you're at with your fitness, okay? So the first one, if I show you from side on, it'll be better for you. So, straight arms, a straight body. Make sure we've got no bottoms in the air, 
and no dipped hips, or else it's going to hurt your lower back. So really pull up and hold your core underneath. So your first level, be tapping the foot up and replacing each time. The next level, you can add some jumps in there as well. So we're jumping that way with a tap in between. The third level, we're not placing that, that, um, that front foot on the ground, we're keeping it off all the time, just to make it a little bit harder for you, okay? So keep it off the ground there. Now, as you're doing this, try and make sure that body is nice and flat. There will be some movement because obviously you're jumping if you're working at a higher level, but try and make sure your bottom is not bouncing up and down all the time. Try and keep it as still as you can, that's your aim, okay? So I'm gonna do the basic level, you can start there. Or like I say, if you're working at a higher level, uh, you want to increase your fitness, aim for levels two or three. So the first one, we're going to go for 10 sets again. So hands underneath shoulders, everything nice and flat, and 10 sets. So we're doing one, and two. Keeping everything else as still as you can. It should only really be that leg that's moving and four. Make sure your core is pulled in the whole time. Don't let your back arch, as it, you'll start to feel it hurting your lower back pretty quickly. This is seven. Nice and slow and controlled again. There's no rush. Eight and nine. Pulling in that core as much as you can, particularly as you get tired. And 10. And relax. So as I say, you can take it up a level uh, as your strength increases, or if you're already there, take it up to level two or the jumping with a level three. So the next exercise is cycling legs. Again, I'll give you three different options, level one, two, and the three. So you pick the one that's most appropriate for your fitness levels. As I say, hopefully in time, you can increase the length of time you do the exercise or the level of intensity you're working at. But see where you're at first of all, pitch it safely and gradually increase, okay? So with all these variations now, the main thing I want you to concentrate on is pulling your core flat and down the whole time. When you're doing this exercise, the tendency is for the abdominals to bulge out with the effort of the exercise and the back to come off the ground. If this is happening, you're not doing it correctly. Make sure this doesn't happen here because you're putting pressure on your lower spine. You want to pull your core flat and down to really support your lower back and make your abs work in the correct way. So level one, cycling legs. We're going to have your hands down by your sides to offer you some stability. It's not for grabbing onto the mat and holding on for dear life. The idea is just literally a bit of stability to offer you there when you're doing the exercise. So level one, feet in the air and imaginary cycling. So that's your level one. Small range of movement and your focus is here on your core, putting it flattened down the whole time. Level two, exactly the same movement, but a bigger range. So wider leg movements here, I'll show you. So this is level two, okay? Bigger cycling. Level three, your hardest level, we're gonna add an upper body crunch in there as well. So as we did earlier with the crunches, you can have options of across your chest here, hands by ears, or even above your head, if you're strong enough, okay? So we're gonna start off with just a demonstration now, I'll show you with a crunch like this. So adding a crunch, and we're doing the cycling legs to go with it, okay? That's your third level. Whatever you pick, this is your focus, pulling it flat and down, to support your lower back and work your abdominals in the correct way, okay? We're gonna go for 10 seconds. I'm gonna show you level one. As I say, pick the level that's correct for you, okay? So 10 seconds worth, flatten down here. Okay, one, two, three, nice and slow and steady. Again, there's no rush. And five, reminding yourself of this, putting flatten down, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Fabulous. As I say, this is the key. Pull it flat as much as you can, and you'll be working it the correct way, in a safe way. On to the next exercise. So the next exercise we're going to do is plank twists. I'm gonna offer you two variations for this one. One will be in a hand plank position, one will be an elbow plank position. 
Now with the planks I was explaining earlier, the idea is to hold your core as much as you can. I want your core pulled up, support your lower back, no bottoms in the air, otherwise cheating and not working your core as much as you should be, and nice and slow and controlled. So let me show you the two variations. Hand plank, as I said earlier, hands underneath shoulders. And the idea is you're twisting your knee to the opposite armpit. You'll never actually reach your armpit, but that's what you're aiming for. So, twisting that way and the other way. That's your hand plank variation. On the elbows, same idea. Twisting and twisting, okay? So nice and slow and controlled. There's no rush, technique is the key. I'd much rather it be slow and controlled and you do less repetitions, but the technique be correct than the other way around. If your technique's wrong, everything else will suffer. You'll find yourself getting injuries. Please focus on the technique to make sure that your body is strengthening in the way it should be. So I'm gonna do 10 repetitions of the hand plank variation, nice and slow and controlled and steady. So hands underneath shoulders. 10 sets, off we go. One. And two. Three. Four. Nice and slow and controlled. No rush. Keep driving that knee to the opposite armpit. Six. Seven. Keep pulling up your core from underneath, particularly as you get tired. Eight. Support your lower back. Nine. Last set. And 10. As I say, bottoms down, core pulled in. Those are the main areas you're looking for. Nice and slow, steady pace. In time, you can increase repetitions to gradually take your fitness levels up. So the last exercise in this set is a reverse curl. Now there is one option really with this one, but we're going to increase the range of movement to take the level up for you. Now we can have feet in the air, and the idea is you've got to imagine somebody pulling your feet and lifting them up and down, up and down. You should feel it working in your lower abs area. The ideal is, as I say, is to go up and down. Try not to let your legs rock forward and back. Otherwise, again, that's cheating. So let me show you. Again, hands here for support. As I said before, you're not gripping onto the mat and using that to uh, replace your abdominal work. It's just for stability. The work is happening here. So reverse curl. It's a small lift up and down. That's your basic level. And to increase the level of intensity, take the legs further up as you go each time. So pitch it as to where you're comfortable at. Again, I would much rather you have better technique and do either less repetitions or less height than I would do if you were going for gold and technique was going. Because you'll end up, again, like I said, you'll end up with injuries, which is what we don't want. So, 10 of these. Again, as I've always said, pull your tummy flat and down, make this work in the correct way, okay? Nice and light on your hands for stability. So, imagine that piece of string being pulled up with your feet or somebody holding onto your ankles and pulling your legs up and down, not forward and back, okay? 10 sets of these, so we're gonna go. One, two, three, four, five, nice and slow and steady, six, seven, you should really feel it working across your lower abs, eight, nine, last one, and 10. As I say, the key for that one is to go up and down, not rocking forward and back. Okay, if you feel you don't find that's easy, like I say, take the range of movement and make it bigger. So lifting your legs higher up, lifting your bottom further off the ground, as long as you're going up and down and not forward and back. So that's the end of your ab set. Eight exercises, and I've given you different options for each one, so you can pitch it at your level. Uh, as I say, over time, you can increase either the number of repetitions or you can increase your level of intensity to take your fitness levels up, but always work within your means. Always remember your technique, because that is the most important thing. And have fun with it. Enjoy. Enjoy.